This was a case of a retinal detachment due to a morning glory syndrome. There was a huge retinal tear in the morning glory area and a retinal detachment uh, that was uh, affecting the macular area and to the periphery. So first I'm performing a PVD that was extremely attached to the retina despite being so gentle uh, lifting the posterior hyaloid, I induce uh, uh, infero nasal retinal tear and also another supranasal uh, retinal tear. I'm performing the vitreous saving to uh, reduce the incarceration of the vitreous because it was too homogeneous and I'm aspirating this retinal fluid through the hole at the, at the morning glory area. Now by manually I'm removing the posterior hyaluronic and the uh, vitreous cortex remnants to avoid the risk of any uh, PBR and I have to do this without injecting PFCL because of the risk of the migration into the sub, uh, subretinal space um, uh, if, if I inject it now. Now I'm filling the, the gap in, into the morning glory area with the amniotic membrane and afterwards, I'm, uh, co after covering this area, I can inject um, PFCL, as uh, you can see now, to stabilize the posterior retina and complete the, the, the vitreous saving without risking damaging the, the retina. After saving completely the retina, I'm feeling the, 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 the tear at the morning glory area with more amniotic membrane and uh, once I've uh, stuffed this uh, hole with the tissue I'm performing fluid exchange and, and silicone oil exchange as you can see now. I'm uh, um, making the most of the iatrogenic retinal tear to drain the supratinal fluid and, 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 and after uh, draining through the retinal tear, I fill with silicone oil and then remove completely the PFCL to uh, avoid migration. You can see post-op, everything was fine, completely attached, but unfortunately, two weeks after the surgery, the patient had an, IOP, an increased IOP due to corticoids and, and the gap opened with a new um, detachment at the optic nerve area. So I'm reoperating the patient, I'm removing the silicone oil and as you can see the minute gap at the edge of the, of the amniotic membrane graft. I'm filling this uh, gap with more amniotic uh, membrane as you can see now, pushing it with a translocation uh, cannula. And after filling this uh, with the amniotic membrane, I perform fluid exchange and um, leaving some PRP on the, on the papillar area and leaving silicone oil again. Unfortunately, it backfired because of the contraction of the PRP that uh, detached the amniotic graft from the, from the hole and uh, as you can see, four hours after surgery, the contraction of the PRP uh, detached the amniotic membrane from the, the hole and uh, there was an increased detachment. Seven days afterwards, it seemed to be healing, but after the reabsorption of the PRP, the detachment appears again, as you can see now, due to this gap in, on, on the edge of the amniotic membrane graft, and I had to reoperate. In this case, after removing oil, I'm planning to, to fill the minute gap in the optic nerve with a tenon capsule. As you can see now, I'm filling the gap with tenon, but not only this, I'm also covering the, the area with amniotic membrane over the, the area in order to, to avoid any migration of fluid into the uh, subretinal space. So after uh, filling and pushing the, the, uh, the tenon into the gap, I'm uh, stretching the amniotic uh, membrane graft and clipping it with perfluorocarbon on the retina. So I'm injecting PFCL while uh, holding the amniotic membrane on the, the, the area I want to cover. And once it's uh, well covered with the, with the PFCL, I can adjust the, the graft on the, the area. And I'm also doing some laser now in this area. 
and again uh, performing through ether exchange and air silicon oil exchange. Unfortunately, in this case, it worked nicely with the after in the post-op period with complete uh, reabsorption of the subretinal fluid in the uh, during the, the next weeks and complete uh, um, um, covering and regeneration of tissue on the uh, optic nerve area, as you can see in the picture. This is a uh, uh, post-op 24 hours, seven days. It was completely flat and uh, the amniotic membrane was uh, reabsorbed during the following weeks but fortunately the, the tissue was completely uh, regenerated and after removing silicon oil and despite the cataract the patient improved vision and the case was uh, fixed with this uh, combination of PRP and amniotic uh, membrane as you can see now after the removing of the, the silicon oil.